playing that well, so they can playing be... devil's advocate. Is there a difference between an osteopathic person working on a patient or shiatsu or whatever massage? Do they not have the same effects too? Yes, in some ways they do. Why? I could give you a lecture now that would blow your mind. It would blow your mind because I have got research done at the Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, the greatest cancer center in the world, in America, showing the effects on the immune system in terminal cancer patients of totally unprofessional massage done by untrained massage people. Nurses were just told to gently massage patients, running into hundreds. It was a beautiful trial, published two or three years ago. One of three trials of similar kind, showing how totally unprofessional, empathetic touch, touch-mediated placebo effect, it's called, is as powerful as any medication known in medicine today. Mind-blowing. I saw these slides at a medical lecture about two years ago in my hospital. And I went up to the lecturer and said, please give me the references as quickly as possible. And someday I'll show it to you. Mind-blowing. Just to watch the, the, the recorded blood changes, blood chemistry changes. It went on for days after the treatment. So yes, there are many ways of introducing an input that has a powerful response. That's the answer to your question. Well, in that case, was that placebo or did they have a trans... Can I, does that Given that it was totally unprofessional, mm. that it's literally involved a light empathetic stroke, stroke, I think it was a very powerful placebo effect. And there's mm. nothing more powerful even my head of department said that at a staff meeting, because I, I was asked to, um, every week, one of the physicians or, or colleagues has to give a, uh, a research paper at a staff meeting. Um, it's called a journal club. So once a week we meet for an hour um, just to listen to one of us reporting on an interesting piece of research. And I presented a piece of research that was remarkable, done just a few months ago, where the professor in Harvard decided to have the standard group of patients without a placebo. Patients all had irritable bowel sy syndrome. And a second group of patients were given a placebo, but were told it was a placebo. And on the bottle of little sugar pills, which they were told were sugar pills, it had written placebo. 59% of those taking the known placebo recovered compared to 39% who had the standard treatment for IBS. Sorry, they had no treatment. So it was two groups. No treatment IBS patients and placebo-treated IBS. The placebo-treated patients, knowing it was a placebo, had a double the rate of improvement of symptoms within three weeks. What do they put it down to? Well, both groups received doctor-patient interaction interest in the patient's condition by the doctors in charge of the research. They both received similar time spent with the physicians. So improvement in the no treatment group was probably related to the care and attention they were given. The fact that they were also given a placebo that they knew about had a very powerful effect somehow, and that's still to be studied. Even when you knew it was a placebo, and the rate of of improvement of symptoms was double that of the <coughs> non-placebo. Anyway, what was the question? I forgot. <laughs> anyway, next question. I was just wondering, so, so when you, sorry, when you're treating people, is it the same as you're treating I am very busy looking for points of resistance. <coughs> I'm very busy watching the patient's feedback see whether I'm hurting the patient or making it uncomfortable for the patient. I don't talk very much in the treatment. It distracts me. And um, I'm concentrating a great deal on the technicalities of our work. But I'm hopefully very empathetic. I mean, you can pick it up so quickly when someone touches you, whether in fact they're touching you with a true desire to help 
and with true empathy for your problems, or whether they're just doing it mechanically. It's so clear. It's clear as any, any musician who hears someone playing someone with heart or without heart, technically or with his heart behind the, the music that he's playing. You can hear it if you're trained to hear it. But touch is far, far easier to pick up because we're all involved in touch from our earliest days, whether it's the mother or, or the carer. And so, yeah. Next question. Mm. Yeah. With your experience in hospitals, do you think that in the foreseeable future we'll see a revolution in hospital care over touch and movement? Yes, because of some of these research results. If if it's sufficiently influential, there's a hell of a lot of opposition because it's treading on physicians' territory. It's treading on whole <coughs> reputations and lives that have been devoted to finding finding pharmacological ways of producing those effects. And here comes along totally untrained people producing better effects than the drugs. What does it do to the status of the physicians who've devoted their lives and whose whole status wraps around their supposed efficacy in pharmacological, pharmacological intervention? So there's going to be a lot of opposition and barriers. Next question. Uh, which may give you a suggestion as to why there'll be a lot of opposition in Britain, in osteopathy, to changing the syllabus in our colleges and in the development of postgraduate courses. I won't go into that further because it's not particularly diplomatic, but it's a hint as to why I think the road is still a very difficult road in osteopathy in Britain and in Europe uh, to produce a change back to the original origins of the profession and its successes. Yeah. You said that you had various doubts in your career. Many. Do you still have those? Or have you got to a point where you really Yes. The doubts crop up every so often when a patient has a bad reaction, despite all the care I've given. When the patient doesn't get better, despite I've given them my heart and soul, the doubts crop up. Yeah. The doubts are there. Less so, because I now avoid all sorts of things that I have learned through experience can produce unfortunate results in the acute patient, in the sick patient. <coughs> but um, the doubts are still there when that happens, particularly if it's a relative, you know, a close friend. It's a bit shattering. Is it doubt, it's not doubting osteopathy as a true or is it... Was Mixed with mixture of my skills and osteopathy, you know, it's all <coughs> under the surface to some degree. And I hope it stays there. Actually, you know why? If I'm confident to the point of overconfidence, I'm a dangerous operator. Mm -hmm. I won't know when to refer, for example. And there are plenty of patients I have to refer, even to surgery. I won't know when. Enough is enough when it's dangerous. Next question. Well done for sticking out this number of hours. Well done indeed. My turn to clap you.